Alright everyone, Cody here. I thought I'd do a little update on my heavy water production. We're two weeks in, and you can see the quantity of uh, liquid that I have left. It's less than half of what I started with. This is a bag of gas that I collected off of this, towards the end there. We're going to go ahead and detonate this later in the video. I would have liked to have gone farther with it. In fact, I was planning on going all the way down to almost to the bottom of the electrodes. That way it'd be about five times more concentrated than I started with. But I ran into a problem. The uh, lead screw here, the top of it broke off. You know, I guess the metal got warm from the electricity going through it and the clamp eventually just clipped it off. So I'm going to have to quit with this uh, particular apparatus. And I've made something else. I've got this one here. It's a little smaller. This will hold about one quart of solution. See, it's got the same lead electrodes here. I'm going to go ahead and distill this down, get rid of the sulfuric acid, you know, concentrate it down, get the concentrated sulfuric acid, and take the vapor and get distilled water. And I'm going to put the distilled water in here. And for the electrolyte, I'm going to use magnesium sulfate or possibly potassium sulfate, depending on what I feel like at the time. Because, as you know, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, it's actually going to keep a little bit of the hydrogen. You know, H2 has got two, two hydrogen atoms, and then you got the sulfate ion. The sulfate is the only thing that's really going to be used as the electrolyte, so the hydrogen is just going to be sticking around in there. So when I distill the acid down, distill the water out of it, it's going to keep that hydrogen. That hydrogen, of course, is going to have a higher percentage of deuterium, which is what I'm wanting. That's not going to be too big of a deal, because I'll probably reuse this acid. And the concentration now, there's, there's maybe that much acid in there and quite a bit of water. So it's not going to be that big of a deal at this stage. But once I start going down to smaller and smaller amounts of water, the electrolyte is going to make a difference if it's keeping some of the hydrogen each, at each step. So uh, I'm going to use something which still contains sulfate because the sulfate salt seems to do really well. It makes nice big bubbles that float to the top and get out quickly. I'm going to use a salt that when I dry it out, all the water is going to leave. It's not going to keep any hydrogen behind. So anyway, I think the amount that I'm going to get out of this when I distill it is going to just about fill this. Because this uh, is not a full gallon. This is about a three-quart jar. So uh, that's possibly going to fit. I'll have a little left over, but then I probably won't distill it all the way down. What I might end up doing is uh, thinking, rethinking this, maybe making a better top for it, and go ahead and start this electrolyzing down again. So that'll stay here at the farm using up the elect excess energy. And this I'm probably going to take with me so I can keep an eye on it because it's going to electrolyze down much faster. Probably get me a little battery charger and put on there to electrolyze it down. Uh, someone pointed out that I was probably losing some of the water due to uh, evaporation through this tube. Um, and that's true. I mean, if you look in the bottom of this tube, there's a little drop of water running around. And, you know, I was expecting that. But it doesn't seem to have been that big of a problem, especially when I get down a little bit. The water would condense up here at the top on the glass and then run back down. I, did, I wasn't really losing very much water. It would be a significant loss once I start getting down to smaller volumes of water. So, as you have probably already seen, I've got me a, a second jar here. So the gas is going to come out of this container. It's going to go. It's going to cool off. So any water droplets are going to get caught inside this jar, and then the gas is going to escape out here. I might even let a little bit of water puddle up in there, so it'll create a barrier so that the bubbles, so if there's like a spark or something, it doesn't blow up the whole thing. Well, I'm sure you guys want to hear about some of the statistics that I got out of this thing. I was putting into it about 300 watts of power. You know, it didn't run all the time. It ran maybe a couple hours a day at most. Let's see, somewhere on here I had some marks. Yeah, back when I was home and was watching it, I, I put marks on here. These marks are how far it went after an hour of electrolyzing. So, about that much every hour. Some, some were bigger than others because uh, more solar power, you know. So, gives you an idea how fast it was electrolyzing. Uh, I figured it was producing about a liter of gas per minute. And that's... It's about 18, 20 grams of gas per hour. That means the amount of gas 
energy that I was getting off of it, if I were to burn that hydrogen again, 300 uh, kilojoules of power, because that's about the amount of energy that water makes when you change it from hydrogen and oxygen to a get to liquid. And since I was putting about 300 watts in, that's about uh, 1,000 kilojoules. So I was getting about one about one third efficiency, or about a third of the power I was putting in got turned into gas. So it was about 30% efficient. It could be better. I think the maximum efficiency is about 65%. It's the maximum you could do with electrolysis. So I was getting about half that, so it wasn't terrible. I mean, it's probably because I had so much high voltage going to it. Something I was uh, thinking that would be interesting is the fact that that uh, amount of gas that I was producing, that was about, uh, if I were to run this continuously for a day, I would produce about half a kilogram of oxygen. Which means that if I had two of these set up, or had maybe a bigger one with twice the power going in, and a way to separate the hydrogen and oxygen gas, it would actually pr be producing enough gas that I could breathe. And since the uh, solar panels up on the roof, I think they were like three kilowatts, but that's when the sun's shining, so if you figure with the sun's not shining uh, half the day, I figured that it would this power from our solar panels would be able to keep two people alive. <laughs> Which means that on Mars, if you had a similar solar array, well, probably about twice as big because of the less efficiency because you're farther from the sun, you'd be able to keep two people alive. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Another thing that might be interesting is the fact that I've electrolyzed this down, I probably started with about three times the natural abundance of deuterium, and now we're like half that, so it's probably six times as much deuterium in this water as you had to find in normal water. I'm, I'm not sure exactly, because I don't have a mass spectrometer, but still. That's actually still less than the water on Mars would have. So if I were starting with the water that you have on Mars, the water on Mars is naturally concentrated in deuterium because of the sun blowing away most of the atmosphere, would mean that it, I'd have to electrolyze this down about that much more to have this much in order to have the same concentration of deuterium as I would have on Mars. Which means that if I were to electrolyze the water on Mars to produce our oxygen, we would be producing heavy water as a byproduct. <laughs> I think that that's pretty cool, and it would be you know, I'd be starting at like this stage. So all that work, all that energy I put into it the last two weeks, uh, that's where I'd be starting on Mars. So making heavy water on Mars is going to be significantly easier than it is here on Earth. So perhaps uh, building a nuclear reactor on Mars isn't so far-fetched. Anyway, I'm going to shut up talking about that. I'm going to go ahead and set this off so you guys can see a big bag of exploding gas. It's going to be awesome, and I'm going to set this thing up. I'm going to get this electrolyzed down and get this boiling. I'll, I'll probably show that in this video as well. Now, if this gag was full of hydrogen, it would probably float. It does feel quite light, but the fact is that the oxygen inside the bag is weighing it down. So it's not quite light enough to float. Okay, so there's the bag. Got it inside this bucket mostly to hold it, <laughs> in case I want to blow away, and also to shield the wind from this paper fuse so it'll actually burn up in there. I've also got a glass jar right here sitting underneath of the plastic bag. I wanted to see if the shock wave would be enough to break the glass. Look good. I'm going to set the camera up. So it looks like it didn't blow up the bucket. Okay, plastic shredded. Oh, look at this. See those cracks? It didn't shatter the glass like I was hoping, but it did crack it. Look at that. <laughs> How about that? All right, hope you like that little explosion. If you think about it, it was a lot of energy released, and it's just a large surface area, and I didn't really confine it very well. Although it did crack the bottle, which I thought was pretty cool. And I also think if I would have like laid the bottle on its side, then it might have actually smashed it. You know, create a better pressure differential rather than just banging the jar under the ground. Also, if I would have had the bag inside the bucket more or had the bug 
like a bottom of the bucket closed off, it might have actually blown the bucket apart. Maybe I'll try it again later. It was a cool experiment. But uh, got this set up. Got me a transformer. This can produce about 10 amps of current continuously at 12 volt. Here's the jar apparatus that I've shown earlier. This honey is just some honey I'm trying to liquefy again using the warm water in my cooling dish. It's not working very well. But anyway, so this is the water which I distilled out of the acid. Uh, if my calculations are correct, it should contain about one milliliter of heavy water inside this jar, but I've still got to get it out. <laughs> I'm using Epsom salts as my electrolyte. I'm kind of deciding that I should have stated with the sulfuric acid because tests I've done on this is producing half as much as I was expecting. So apparently sulfuric acid is a lot better. Let's go ahead and show you the amperage that I'm drawing on this. There we go. It's about 5.8 amps of current going into it, which uh, at the 15% efficiency, it's going to take, it would take a month to go through that court there. At least I can run it continuously. I think this weekend I'm going to take this home and distill it back out and redo it with sulfuric acid because the sulfuric acid seems to be much more efficient and I would boil it down faster. Now, I might save a couple of weeks. And uh, what I'll end up doing to uh, recover the deuterium that gets stuck in the sulfuric acid is I will just uh, destroy the acid using calcium carbonate. Those will react. It'll release water. So, yeah. Hope you guys are enjoying my little video series. I'll sit here and watch this bubble. And see you next time.